Hi guys, Anthony Turnham here. I genuinely think this is one of the most important videos I've ever made on photo editing because while all the creative editing is lovely, speed and efficiency is king. So in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can set up a really great generic preset or template inside of Luminar AI, leveraging Luminar's artificial intelligence so that you can apply that globally to all your photographs and get your editing done so much faster. I'm super pumped to share this with you and I'm really positive that it's going to be beneficial whether you're just starting out with photo editing or whether you're a seasoned pro like a wedding photographer. So let's open up Luminar AI and see how to do this. So here I am inside of Luminar AI and I'm currently in my family photos folder here. And this is just a random collection of unedited family shots that may also be relevant to you guys. You may also have similar just snapshots of your family. And the idea is we're going to create a preset that you're going to be able to apply to every single photo. And providing we set it up right, 99 times out of 100, it's going to improve that photo. So we're going to start off working on this photograph of me teaching my daughter how to fish. And that's a pretty hilarious thing in itself because it's a very much a case of the blind leading the blind because when it comes to fishing, I have no idea what I'm doing, but it sure looks like I'm giving it a good go here. But in terms of the editing, let's ask ourselves, why do we even need a template that is going to work universally on all of our photos and improve them? I mean, it sounds like the holy grail, right? One click and you're done. And that is what Luminar AI's templates are designed to do. The problem I found is that the templates that ship with Luminar AI, as great as they may be from a creative point of view, they may not be that great in terms of editing your photos from a longevity point of view. Let's come up to the suggestions that Luminar's made here, Blockbuster, and as a click through, you'll notice that they are very stylized. Here we've got a kind of cyan wash. Here we've got an almost filmic teal and orange look. In this Shanghai one, don't get me wrong, I like this, but whereas it works for this nice, warm, sunny day environment, it might not work so well for another shot that I've got. Sure, you can go through and pick and choose the templates that you want to apply to each photo on an individual basis, but then your collection of imagery just isn't going to be very cohesive. Here's Cyberpunk. Here's Speedway. This one and so many others have film grain applied to them, and I don't really want that applied to my photos. So my recommendation is we create a template that's going to work so much better on a much wider variety of photos. So let's reset this and start doing that. Right click, revert to original, and we're gonna jump straight into edit. I'm currently in local masking, so that's what I was working on my last photo, but we'll come into the essential selection. And my guiding principle here is I want to leverage as much of Luminar's AI tools, artificial intelligence, as I possibly can and any tools that are particularly photo specific, such as for example, the sun rays filter, I'm gonna avoid building them into a preset. I'm gonna keep things nice and light, nice and simple, because talking from experience here, I have a whole load of photos that I've processed in a certain style, say 15, 10, even just five years ago, and now I don't like that style and I want to re-edit it. So nowadays, particularly for my own family photos, I prefer a less is more approach. I want them looking good, but I don't want them over-processed and over-stylized to the point that I'm gonna regret what I've done in a few years time. So let's jump back to the essentials. And the first thing I'm gonna come into is the light section. The white balance we're gonna leave as shot because most of the modern cameras today are pretty good at getting an accurate white balance. And if you go in and start choosing something specific to the photograph, you're breaking that principle of creating a universal template. So we'll leave that as shot. The same goes for exposure. Your photo may be too bright or too dark, but we're not gonna fix it with exposure because that is specific to the photo. We're gonna use Luminar's AI to figure that out for us. So let's start with smart contrast. The clue is in the name, it's a smart filter. So if we start to bump that up because we like a bit of contrast in our shots, we wanna get that to a point where we're happy. And normally you get it where you think it's gonna look good and then just ease it back a little bit. Highlights will normally need a little bit of protection, so we'll bring those down, and the shadows normally need a little bit of a boost, so we'll bring them up. 100 is way too much, but let's just utilize a little bit of that somewhere around 10. And now we want to build in a profile that matches our camera. So rather than using the default Luminar one, so if you jump in here, you're gonna have access to camera-specific profiles. 
and I like to work from a camera standard profile. And straight away Luminar has recognized that this was shot on a D700, it's an older photo, and we're good to go. I know that the mid-tones in my D700 are usually a little low, so I can use my curves to boost those up and that will universally help them. I don't want to go too far, but just a little, little boost in those mid-tones I think will go a long way. Have a little play with that yourself with the curves, whether you need to make that adjustment. I know that's specific to my particular camera. Now we're going to jump into Enhance AI. This is the daddy Mac of editing. I love this. This filter's been around for a little while with Luminar, but it's super, super powerful. Let's push it all the way to 100 and see what it does. And straight away, we've got more vibrancy and color going on in the background. We've got more details introduced. This one slider does so much. It works on contrast on a global scale, contrast on a local scale, saturation, color improvement. It's doing the lot. So <laughs> if I take that down and push it up again, you'll see it's making some nice changes there. Because this is an AI driven tool, I am going to be leveraging the heck out of this. This is going to be doing so much of the heavy lifting for me for getting my photo looking good. If I turn this off and then turn it on, you can see that it's already doing so much to kind of lift this photo. You may feel that it's too much, too much enhancement, and that may be the case. And if that is for you, just ease it back. I might drop mine down to around 65 because the higher amounts may work well for some photos, but not all of them. So as I said before, err on the side of caution and just ease it off slightly. Now let's move on to Structure AI. Now while this one is AI driven, I find it's a little bit more heavy handed. If I push that to 100%, it's just too much. It's bringing out too much crunchy contrast and I don't really like that. What I do like though is that it recognizes where humans are, where skin detail is, and it doesn't really apply that effect to the skin. So that's pretty cool, but I do find it's a stronger effect than the Accent AI. So what we're gonna do is just, just ease that in, maybe maybe only around, say, eight, something like that. Altering the color is a photo by photo basis, so we are gonna leave that. Same with black and white, leave it. Now details, we're gonna jump into there because most photos, particularly if they are raw photos, straight from the sensor, they will need some sort of sharpening. So if we zoom in, we can see better what we're dealing with at 100%, and I'm gonna push the sharpening all the way to 100, and then I'm going to turn it off and turn it on and see exactly what that's doing. Now, I'm not 100% sure how much AI is built into Luminar's sharpening tool, but I actually find that when you push it to 100%, it's really great at working with the details and not introducing sharpening where you don't want it. So in the background here, we're not getting over sharpening. Or if you have sky elements in your photo, it doesn't over sharpen the sky. It's staying more specific to details. So I'm happy to have that pretty heavy in my preset. Let's go for 75. And I'm going to zoom back out. Now you can add denoise to your template, but to be honest, that's something that I'm not really too worried about. I don't, the Nikon cameras for a long time have been really good at minimizing noise, so I'm not too worried about that. If you do apply denoise to your template, uh, what I would recommend is try not to take it too far to the right because your photo starts to take on a much more painterly appearance, which may be great if you're working on a more creative piece but we're trying to create a template which is universally applicable to most photos. And we're dealing with photography, not paintings. Okay, we'll zoom out. And the next thing I'm gonna do is jump into vignette. Personally, I quite like a little bit of darkening around the edges of my photos, universally. So I don't wanna be heavy handed because that's gonna just look completely over the top, but I can actually introduce something around maybe that 37 minus 37 mark. And I'll turn that off and on just to get a feel for it off and on and I am happy with that. Let's see where we've come to. Let's have a quick look at our before and we're dealing with a pretty flat photo here. It's lacking saturation, it's lacking contrast. If I release this, boom, I think we've got a much better photo now. Most of the creative tools will probably want to be avoided, particularly sky, augmented sky, no need for those atmosphere, sun rays, they're all specific to individual photos you might be working on, so just leave all of those. If you're a particular fan of, say, the dramatic filter, you might want to put a little bit of it into your edit, but I would keep it really, really low. So if I turn that off and on, it's just adding a little pop, but nothing more than that. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I am a massive fan of the mood section. Choosing a LUT for your photo can be a great way to give it a feel by colorizing it. So if I flick over these, it's a really, really nice way to unify a color scheme 
and just imbue your photo with a lovely feeling. However, that is specific to a photograph. Whether or not you want a cool or a warm feeling to your photo, that is specific to that photo. So in this preset, we are gonna leave it out. If I jump into matte and just show you this, you'll realize as I push that all the way to 100, you're getting that kind of washed out vintage look that became so popular on Instagram. And some people are still using that, and that's great for Instagram, for your feed, if you're wanting to create a very stylized photo. But my personal recommendation is for your own photography, for the longevity of the memories and things like this, you don't want to over stylize the photo. So I'm gonna reset that and leave it out. The same could be said for mystical in terms of leaving it out because it's quite stylized. And if I push that to 100, you'll see exactly what I mean. But I actually really like the effect. So I'm just going to tick all that in somewhere around. I don't know. Let's go for 10. And if I turn it off and turn it on, you'd barely know it's there. But it is. And now there's just one last thing that we need to do. And that is jump into the pro section. And here we have access to the optics. Providing that you're dealing with raw photos, you will have access to auto distortion corrections. Tick that box. Luminol will recognize the lens that your photo was shot with and make any corrections if need be. Chromatic aberration is the slight shift that you get from cyan and magenta just when you zoom in. You sometimes see that particularly around the edges. Tick that box, it's gone. Same for defringing. Tick that box, it's gone. You can correct any vignetting, any darkening on your lens that may have been introduced by also including de-vignetting. But as you know, I actually introduced a little bit of vignetting. I like that look, so I'm not gonna play with that slider. And that is it, guys. That is my generic template that should be able to fix most photos. Let's look at our before and our after, and let's use a slider just so that we can see as we bring that forward and back. And let's zoom in and do that. And as I move that left and right, you can see that we have certainly improved the photo in terms of the exposure, even though that we didn't actually move the exposure slider. We've also improved the contrast. We've improved the color. Overall, it's a much better appearance for the photo. Okay, so we've got a pretty clean edit that with my fingers crossed, I think can be applied to pretty much any photograph to enhance it. We've steered clear of anything stylistic that is going to date. So now we're in the great position where we should be able to apply that template to any photograph and see an improvement. So now what we need to do is save that out as a template and test it on some other photographs. And when you do this, I recommend just test some different genres as well. Test some photographs that were taken in different lighting conditions as well. And once we're happy with it and we've saved the template, I'll show you how we can leverage it and batch apply that to all of our photos to improve them. It's super powerful and super easy. So let's do it. Okay, so to create your own templates, it's really easy. Come down to the bottom right and where you see these three ellipses, you just click save and that is it. Our template is now saved. To access it, you wanna come up to templates and then come over to the right hand side and click on the star, which is my collection. So the top one is Luminar's collection. The bottom one is what they call my collection. And from inside there, you'll have access to user templates. And that is where your template will now be stored. Come up with a more appropriate name. So I'll go with AT, Anthony Turnham Basic Enhance 3. And now we are good to use this on any photo. So let's come back to our catalog. Let's open up this photograph here. Luminar analyzes the photo and now it's ready for editing and we can come to templates and we can just click on AT Basic Enhance 3 and boom. Did you see that pop? Before, after, before and after. And if we zoom in, we should also see an improvement before and after, before and after. Okay, let's go back to our catalog and try another one. We've got this photograph here of my son on his bike, really, really underexposed. So this would be a real test for this. Let's click Enhance 3. That's certainly been improved. I would still come in actually and just make a slight refinement on that and improve the exposure. Um, but that's a great thing. This gives you a really great starting point that you can then, with just now one slider, the exposure, we are fixed. So we've gone from that to that just with our template and an exposure increase. Let's try another one. Look at this funny guy in the background. Let's see if it can improve this photo. It's pretty funny, I told them all, we'll go for a real serious one, guys. Look all serious. 
<laughs> Look at me in the background. What a wally. All right, let's jump to templates and click our template we just created before. And boom, just like that, we have an improvement. Before, after, I think that's done a great job of improving it. For this particular image, I would want to crop this in. So in theory, we could have built in the composition AI tool and set that to automatically crop the photos. But more often than not, the crop that I've done in camera is actually what I want. So if I do have cropping to do, I'm gonna come into the edit section and actually do that myself. So let's click composition AI and you'll see that straight away it got rid of the carpet for us, got rid of the little edge of the couch there. I think it might be a little too tight, but we'll just move that over there. And so there you go, we're dealing with just our template application and one tool, and we've uh, really improved the photo. Before, after. If you're new to the channel and for some reason haven't seen Luminar AI before and you would like to get yourself a copy because you like what you see, I have a discount code which is at sky10 and you're welcome to use that. There's a link below that will take you to the checkout and if you use that link, it's helping me out with the channel as well. So you get to save some money and I get a very small commission from that which just helps me keep creating these free videos, free training for you guys. So I'd really appreciate that guys. And if you have used my link in the past to get yourself your copy, I say thank you very much i really appreciate it thank you so we've done a few tests let's say that we're convinced and happy that our template is universally good it's going to work with most photos how do we save a whole bunch of time and apply it to all of our photos well you jump into your catalog and one easy way to do it would be just to come to a photo that you've applied it to right click and go to adjustments or control click on the mac you copy the adjustments or a shortcut for that is control C. And now we could use a shortcut control A to select all of your photos. And now we just right click or control click and we say adjustments, paste adjustments. And now Luminar is going to go through and apply that template to all of our photos. And so just to check that we're on the right path, we can open up another one. You're going to get a little bit of movement over here in the Luminar bar, and that's just Luminar processing, putting all of those effects onto the photo, and bammo. Look at that. Look at that. What an improvement. And we've basically done nothing. And now you've got that great foundation in the edit. That's when you can come in and be more creative if you want. So two things I might like to do to this is introduce some more sun rays coming through here. It's just screaming out, put some sun rays in me and also give it a more warm tone. So let's quickly do that. So this was gonna be a video just about the templates, but let me just show you how to do that. I'm too excited not to. Come to creative, sun rays. Let's crank the amount all the way to 100 so we can see what's going on. And now let's place the sun center exactly where the sun was. Hallelujah. Now we can drop the amount back. We could come into the warmth section just so we can warm those rays up and give them a nice warm glow. And now we're free to come in and add one of those lovely LUTs to give it some color toning. I think something like uh, Genius might be quite nice for this one. Just so we're sort of washing it out a little bit, but adding that nice summery kind of vibe. So here's our before and here's our after. Super simple editing, all based on that powerful template we've created. If you're anything like me, you take a lot of photographs. I take a huge amount of photographs of my family and what we get up to to the point that prior to Luminar, when I was solely using Lightroom for my processing, I have a massive backlog of thousands of photos that I've never got to edit. So using this technique, I'm gonna be able to revisit all of those photographs and providing I don't get too precious about the intricacies of every single photograph, I'm gonna be able to batch process these in no time at all. So I know how valuable this is to me. I hope this has been valuable to you guys. If it has, if you think this is gonna save you guys some time, please do me a favor, leave me a thumbs up, give me a little comment just to let me know. And if you haven't already and feel like subscribing to the channel, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Thank you so much for watching guys. From me to you, much love, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.